Okay, in the last video we had um, something a little bit like this. It, it didn't look strictly the same. I've moved some things around to clean it up, but we had a system whereby we had a sample player um, here. Uh, I've loaded a little sample of a, of a closed hi-hat. We can hear it here. Um, and playing back whenever it was triggered by a, a MIDI note on a MIDI keyboard. Um, now the way that we had it set up was we had this note in object in Max um, and that was outputting um, whatever MIDI note came in and when it was finding the right note when it was selecting MIDI note zero uh, MIDI note 60 which is uh, middle C it was triggering a bang which would trigger the sample which would send to the output so if I unlock you can see the little labels here so note in um, outputs any received MIDI notes. We're getting rid of the strip note because you'll remember that we had the weird sort of note on, note off effect. Um, so we've got rid of that. And then if uh, the cell object, if select finds 60 as the note coming in, it will output a bang, which is what's gonna trigger it. So that was the system that we had in place. Um, but this only works for a, for a keyboard object. Um, it only works for MIDI notes. So that's fine for me on this because I've, I've not got any kind of extra control effects. But what if you're using something like the bass station or another MIDI keyboard that has something like a modulation wheel or a pitch bend keyboard, uh, a pitch bend key or any kind of fader or control knob or anything like that? Um, well, in that case, no in isn't really going to work for us. How do we, we, need, we need a way to access those um, controller values. And that's where MIDI... Um, MIDI controls come in, MIDI controller values and controller numbers. Um, so for the purpose of this video, I'm gonna say goodbye to the Keith Macmillan and we're gonna use something else. So here's our something else. Um, I'm using a Korg Nano Control 2 um, device, which as you can see is a series of um, faders or sliders uh, pan knobs. We've got um, it's set up for use in a DAW. So we have things like we have buttons for record, play, stop. We have solo, mute, and record arm buttons on each of the channels. Um, but this is a MIDI device, but it's not a MIDI keyboard. It's not going to output MIDI notes for us. Um, I can I can show you this by I've plugged in a note another note in object, and it's just listening. Um, to the pitch and the velocity of a channel. And if I move things around, nothing is changing on the pitch. We're not hearing any pitches um, in the same way that we were on the keyboard. So how do we access these things? Well, we're going to use a different device now. Um, we're going to use Max's CTLIN, um, Control In, um, which functions um, very similarly to the note in object, except you guessed it, it's listening for MIDI control values and control data. Um, so what do we have here? So in the same way as the note in object, the control in object or CTL in is going to output the received MIDI control values from a MIDI device um, like uh, the nano control here. So um, just as with the note in object, you can double click it um, I can click this and you'll see that it gives me um, the possible MIDI input. So I could select Nano Control 2 or I could just have it set to um, all devices. So it listens to all MIDI devices coming in by default. So um, let's go back so you can see the labels for everything else. Um, now, the, the first thing that you're going to want to do when you plug in a new device is there's not really a standardized way um, across devices to tell you um, what... Uh, what part of the device does what thing. So you're essentially going to have to plug in a system like this and you're going to have to listen for the controller value and the controller number. Um, now the controller number is sort of like the identifier of what the part of the, the device that you're using is. Um, and really the best way to do that is to just plug it in and see what corresponds to, uh, to, to what kind of object on the device. So I know that on this nano control, um, fader zero or controller number uh, zero this one here is the uh, first fader so if i move this now you'll see that my controller number is zero and my controller value is going to move between zero and one two seven um, remember our standard sort of midi values um, so moving along then i assume that this will be 
um, something like control number one and then two and three and four so that we can just check that yet yeah, one two three four five six seven so if I want to um, make sure that I'm only listening to control number one I'll, I'll set that um, that so similarly uh, we have to find out what other things do so if say I wanted to use this pan knob I'm going to sweep that and we see that okay this is controller number 16 and 17 18 so they tend to count up sequentially but you just have to find out where you're starting from and similarly with each of these buttons they'll have they'll each be assigned their own controller number now we can think of these a little bit like um, our MIDI notes on the keyboard so remember that we know middle C is um, MIDI note value 60 so um, on on here I know that controller number zero is fader one so I'm going to um, I'm going to make a note of that um, it's worth writing these things down as you're using it so say if you had a control uh, modulation wheel on a keyboard you could um, plug it into the the control in object find out what the controller number is for that modulation wheel and just make a note of that because we'll need it in a second so um, why do we want to use um, control values? Um, well, it could be something as as kind of simple and as a, and as innocuous as using like a pitch bend wheel on a keyboard, um, or controlling things like panning. Um, uh, you, we could do more interesting things um, like this. Really. Um, getting access to MIDI's control um, data, controller numbers, controller values, opens up so much more of using MIDI in our Macs devices. Um, so for the for the sake of um, this assi assignment, you might want to set it to something like um, panning or um, playback level or something like that. Uh, for, for this, I'm going to set it to something um, that's quite um, noticeable just so it gives us something to kind of follow along with um, so what I want to do today I want to figure out how we can use fader 1 this fader here to control the sample playback pitch of our um, of our sampler so remember this is it at, at normal speed let's turn that up I want to figure out how we can control this um, oh, slow it down, speed it up a bit. I want to link this to that. Um, now that's not going to work. We could just try something like this. We could just try plugging it straight in. Um, it's going to be quite extreme. See now anything past about 10 is just inaudible. It's quite difficult to control but then also I only want fader 1 to do this. I don't want fader 2 to do it or 3 or one of these or this button here. Now the problem with the control in object is it's just listening for all control values. So anything on here is going to affect the sample's pitch and that's not particularly helpful to us. So how do we refine this a little bit? How do we tell um, our sample playback pitch or speed that we only want one particular type of control uh, number? Well, we're going to have to um, play around with the control in object a little bit more. Quite handily, the control in object actually um, will filter out um, particular uh, controller numbers just by passing it in argument. So if we know that we only want to listen to out for controller number one, so fader one, this one here as controller one, all we have to do is say control in one and then you'll see that we uh, we actually take down the number of um, outlets. So now we are just going to get, if I create a new integer object here, we are only going to get from controller one. I've got that the wrong way around. It should be zero. Um, controller one is fader two, helpfully. Um, so control in zero is listening to controller number zero, which is fader one. So there we go. And if I move any of the other faders, you see that we don't get any numbers out here. So so that's that's helpful. So we could just do that now. 
and we've got the right fader, but this is still far too much. Um, so what we need to do is we need to change the number slightly. We need to, to scale it. Um, now, the easiest way to do that, as you, you may have guessed, if we need to scale the number, is to use a scale object. Um, now, scale is really handy because it takes um, it takes the minimum input and maximum input, which we know because its MIDI is 0 to 127, and it lets us choose um, what we want to output. So I'm just going to say uh, 0 um, floating point number and uh, 2. So we're basically going to take in um, any value from 0 to 127, 127 um, and we're going to um, output a range of numbers from uh, 0 to 2. So um, actually let's just let's just say it makes it easier than me keep tapping this um, So that a bit bigger. So now, with any luck, so you'll see now uh, when we're at the maximum, we're at one two seven here from the controller value. Um, what we're we're putting out of the scale object is two, and if I go down to zero, zero is still zero. So we're scaling that output. Now, um, this obviously could be could be patched up to anything. You saw earlier um, I was patching up to a whole range of different things, including the tempo of the metronome, the pitch. Um, we could also um, we could open up our mixer and we could uh, play around with the panning. We could control it with one of these. Um, there's all sorts of things. So on your sampler, um, you know, consider um, you've you you know you've we looked at uh, making um, an effect uh, an, an audio delay you could play around with the delay the delay time in that you could play around with the panning of a sample the pitch of it um, there's all kinds of things that you could do now um, and really the control object is the simplest way of doing that